watching this right now, you are a disciple of Jesus. You're a follower of Jesus Christ. And Jesus gave us the qualifier in verse number one. This is given to his disciples, and here's the reason why. He gave them this parable, this nun story, for them to get an, uh, an understanding of a principle, a godly principle. And this is the godly principle that you should always pray and not think. Let's go forward in this parable. This is what he says. There was a judge uh, in a certain city who neither feared God nor cared about people. Verse 3. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. Now, first, and I, I moved a little too fast there because first he tells us the character of this judge. This judge here didn't care about people, did not fear God. Now, Jesus is setting this parable up. Remember, this has given them a godly principle. And so right away, you can hear that this parable is not uh, uh, putting God equal to this judge because Jesus says this judge in this parable did not fear God nor cared about people. And then he goes on to say that there was a woman. And this woman came to him repeatedly, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. And the judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or I care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. The New Living Translation says it. I love this. I'm going to give her what she give her her justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Now Jesus is giving this parable to illustrate a kingdom principle. And the first principle that he's letting us know is how people treat you is not how God will treat you, first of all. He said that this judge that the woman is seeking repeatedly to the point that is aggravating him first is a person that does not fear God, has no fear of God, which means no wisdom, no knowledge, has, has no grounding, has no foundation. This is not a godly judge, does not fear God. And secondly, to make matters worse, they, this judge does not care for people. So Jesus is already putting up a juxtaposition here. Now, compare God to this judge. There's no comparison here at all. But watch this. The woman repeatedly goes to him that it wears him out. The Bible says, he says, I'm going to give her justice because she is driving me crazy. <laughs> She's driving me crazy because she asks repeatedly over and over and over again. And he gives her justice. Verse 6. Then the Lord said, Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Now, he did not say learn a lesson from this woman, but learn a lesson from the unjust judge. What is a lesson from the unjust judge that we must learn first? Because there's a lesson to learn from the woman as well. But the first lesson he says is learn this from an unjust judge. Even he rendered, verse 7, a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. Now, Jesus says, now you've got to, I know we focus on the persistent woman and, and, and we'll get to her in just a minute. But Jesus says the lesson to learn is not from the woman's persistency, but the lesson to learn is from this unjust judge. And Jesus is saying that this unjust judge, after the woman repeatedly pursued him day and night to the point that he says, he characterizes as she is driving me crazy. She's everywhere I go. Can you picture it in your eye that he could go uh, to get coffee and the woman's there crying out to him? That he goes to the laundromat, the woman's there. He goes home and the lady is there waiting for him when his chariot pulls into his house. As he walks with his child or his, or his wife or whatever his, his relational circumstances may be, the woman is there, give me justice, give me justice. Day and night while he's asleep, she's outside the window, give me justice. In the morning on his way to the courthouse, although he doesn't fear God or care for people, she's pursuing him. And watch this. And he gives her justice. And then Jesus says this. Now, if this unjust judge can move because of her persistency, then he says the question he poses to you and I. 
Don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? He said, let me, let me reason with you. If this ungodly, uncaring judge will finally, after time, do what is right, not out of the goodness of his heart, not because he fears God, not because he cares about it, but because of her persistency, he says, now, what do you think about God who is totally opposite? God who is all wise, God who is completely holy, God who cares. God cares so much he gave his only begotten son. And then Romans says, if he gave you his son, will he not freely give you all things? This God who cares for you while we were yet sinners gave his son. This God who's demonstrated his love for you. If this unjust judge will give her justice, why wouldn't this God who loves you, watch this, and then he calls us this word chosen, this chosen people. He's called out this, you're chosen. Can you just tell you, I'm chosen, I'm chosen. He's talking about you. Well, will this, if this unjust judge can do that, learn the lesson. What about God concerning you? There's somebody watching me today and you're about to faint, you're about to give up because you feel like God is treating you unjustly. You feel like God is not listening to you, God, that God is his judge in this story. He doesn't, he's not, he doesn't care about you. God is not right. God is not fair. God is doing something for them or for those people, but not for me. And, and you're crying out to God day and night. Some of you have stopped crying out to God, stopped praying, pursuing him, because you feel like he's not just and he doesn't care. Learn the lesson. Jesus says the first lesson we learn is from this unjust judge. And the question he poses to you, if this God that didn't spare his own son, will he not freely give you all things? I want you to hear this today. Don't remember, it starts out by saying this parable is given to those, his disciples, so that they would always pray and not faint, not give up. Don't give up. Some of you have been praying for, to God for a certain issue for months maybe for years, some for hours, some for days, and you haven't seen God move, and I want you to be encouraged to not give up. Now, learn the lesson from this unjust judge. Although he did not grant the woman justice when she asked for it, but the unjust judge heard her. How do I know he heard her? The text says, she's driving me crazy. I hear her in my ear day and everywhere I go, she's there. I'm listening to her. I'm trying to sleep. She's outside my window. She's in the morning, in the evening. She's crying out to me day and night. I hear her. And I want you to hear this today. God hears every prayer. He hears your prayer. His ear is not heavy that he can't hear your prayer. He's not busy with other matters that he doesn't hear your prayer. There's no hierarchy in God listening. Oh, this is, the, this is the priority one, that's a priority four. No, no, no. God hears every prayer. Just like this unjust judge who did not fear God, who does not care for people, yet he could not deny that he heard her request. I don't know where you are today, but I want you to be reminded God hears your prayer. And at some point, my brother and my sister, that should satisfy us. That ought to do something for you to know that he hears me. That he hears me. And I want you to be encouraged. God hears your prayer today. The whisper of a prayer, he hears it. The, the fainted prayer, the, the tear wet prayer, the, the, the tears that you cry on your pillow at night and no one's here. You Maybe you land right beside your spouse and they have no clue. But God hears you. Maybe you're in the midst of people and they have no clue. But God hears you. He's not unjust. He's very just. And he cares for you. Peter would say, cast your care, which is a prayer move. Cast your care upon him. Why? He cares for you. Wherever you are, you cast, you keep casting your prayer. You give it to him. You cast your prayer. Let him deal with the consequences. Let him deal with the timing. You cast your care. Watch this. And as you continue to cast your care upon him in prayer, you will not faint. You will not give up. 
Not because the prayer is answered. Because in this action of casting your care, you're releasing this prayer to God. And you're trusting him with the consequences. Don't you faint. Don't you give up. Whatever that issue is on your mind right now, cast it upon the Lord right now. Can I pray for you right now? Father, those who are listening right now, those who are watching right now, I pray that they would hear, as you said, that they would learn the lesson from the unjust judge. Your focus was on the judge. Learn the lesson. You told us, Lord, in scripture, that if this unjust judge knows how to do what's right because of persistency, certainly our Heavenly Father, who is the opposite, who is holy and righteous and justice, who does care for each one of us, the whole world. You love the world so much that you gave your only begotten son. If this is who you are, and since it is, will you not answer in your timing the prayer request of your people? I pray for that man, Lord Jesus, who wants to give up, that he would just cast his care upon you. I pray for that woman who's thinking about giving up, Lord, that she would cast her care. For that young person who's thinking about giving up, they would cast their care upon you because you hear every prayer. And may that bring comfort to all of us. In Jesus' name I pray. David says this, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And David says, yea, though I'm walking through a valley of the shadow of death, I have no fear for you with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over, and surely goodness and mercy is following you all the days of your life. And let us dwell in the house of the Lord together. I'll see you this weekend. Selah. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss the video. See you next time.